Sit. Wait. Wait. Okay. <laughs> She's crazy for the cookies. We actually ate one of those the other day. They're pretty good. Uh, yeah, my name is Cameron Marigold, and I'm a colorist. What does a colorist do? Uh, a colorist makes stuff look good. <laughs> Helps make stuff look good. Um, let me formulate the answer really quick. What does a colorist do? What, does a color, what do you guys think a colorist does? Uh, it gives a film a specific look. Okay. Like a, a, yeah, a colorist. Yeah, I'll say that. Before we enter into the wizarding mind of Cameron Marigold, I want to quickly thank today's video sponsor, who is Milno, who actually helps support a lot in the actual movie itself. Milno is an organizational tool for visual people like myself that has 10 times my pre-production quality, thus leading to much better final video products. For my short films and YouTube videos, I've used Milno to create shout lists, organize logistical parts, create mood boards, schedules, and so on. But creating a feature film has made me realize just how powerful of a tool Milnote can really be. A movie is a gigantic puzzle with a million different moving pieces that are different shapes moving at different times. And Milnote was my one stop for outlining my ideas and scenes for my script, to compiling references I could use to communicate to anyone, to making complex schedules make sense, plotting locations, wardrobe, props, music, the list just goes on and on. Directing is basically just communicating what's up inside your head. Uh, to your cast and crew to make that thing that's in your head actually happen. I found that having all these visual boards that I could easily share on set with the production designer, the DP, our producers, whoever made my ideas more clear and made me a better director. It's been the one tool I've used through this entire production and continuing to use today to communicate to our post team in planning which festivals we're gonna try to enter into. If you're looking for what, in my opinion, is the best organizational tool out there for filmmakers or pretty much anyone, check out the mail note link in my description below. And yeah, let's get back to our colorist. <laughs> All right, what do we got? I'm on DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I have the mini panel. I think the advanced panel is like a little overkill, but uh, this thing is key. I don't think I could work without it. Um, and what else do I got? I got the Mac Studio. Let me look up the specs really quick. Here we go. We got the M1 Ultra with 128 gigs of memory of RAM uh, and a good ass graphics card. And then uh, we're running the Apple Studio Display, 27 inch, uh, because it looks nice. The actual display is kind of garbage. Um, and then we have a Flanders DM250, which they don't make anymore, but it's like the best. And then this is the LG32 EP950, I think is what it's called. This is, this is exciting. The, on top of the the itis, oh shit, that just fucking, sorry, that shocked me. On top of the itis raid, I have a 16 terabyte uh, SSD raid. That's insane. And if you're not working off SSD, you're doing, you're doing something wrong, for sure. So me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got into color a couple years ago. Um, I always, I was interested in the film side of things uh, and I was in the music industry before um, but I think what drew me to color was just like how powerful it is and how how much you can change like somebody's emotion when watching something just from the white balance or the color or the contrast level or the saturation level um, and I think that's what drew me drew me into it feature workflow is you go through and you group uh, scene by scene or like setup by setup like let's see i kind of grouped i grouped all of the locker room stuff into one uh into one group and then you just grade like on top of the group and it takes care of every clip 
in that setup. So you don't have to, it's almost like in Premiere using an adjustment layer with a LUT or something. Uh, and then you just go through and you balance like, you know, whatever you want to do, not this, but you know, just kind of play around and make sure it, it feels consistent shot to shot. Maybe I'll go to a different one where his butt's not in it. I got involved with, I think I'm sick because I've been a long time subscriber uh, of Danny. And I just decided one day to reach out and send him a message. And I thought that he would either leave me on red or not say anything. <laughs> and uh, to, you know, to a pleasant surprise, he was actually very stoked on the prospect of, of working with each other. So that was super exciting. The color direction with Idis, uh, we wanted to keep it very naturalistic, not pushing uh, a super heavy look in, in one direction or trying to push a bunch of emotion through color. So we're definitely trying to keep it grounded in reality, but still have it like, you know, a little flavor thrown in there. You talked a lot about like end of the fucking world and uh, beautiful boy. Right, those were in Manchester by the sea as well. So a lot, like, for example, Beautiful Boy was shot on film. Um, so I figured the best route to go with this stuff was grading under a film print emulation, which is, uh, it's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna explain the whole thing because it's, it's in depth. But I'm, I'm really comfortable working. I work a lot with airy cameras a lot. So I transformed uh, S log three to to Airy log C, um, and then what I did was I took a conversion LUT that takes log C to like a film negative, so it gives you the same kind of colors as a film negative, um, and then that goes under the FPE, which is the film print emulation, and you do all your grading in between the two. Um, and then, and then we get this. Yeah, I think it's important to find a niche. Uh, I, I, it varies person to person, obviously, but I didn't find any sort of success until I niched down specifically to color. When I first started, I was trying to be a director, DP, color, editor, like everything together. And that works for a lot of people, but for me specifically, especially in LA, there's just like too much competition. So once I niched down into color, I started seeing a lot, of, a lot more projects coming in the door. Oh, it's hot. It's uh, very green. I think they call it lime rush. And um, it doesn't, but it does uh, now. <laughs> it's the perfect color for a colorist, I feel like. Did you grow up around like, a lot of people who were like, trying to do filmmaking stuff? No, uh, music. That's, I started music. Um, I was a mixing engineer until uh, like 2021 is when I went freelance. Yeah, people hit me up all the time and they're like, do you have any tips or tricks? And I just always offer to get, like, to get good taste. Because you can't, I, I don't think you can be a colorist, like, I don't, I don't want to say that, but it's tough to be a colorist and pull, like, looks that grab people's attention if you don't have good taste, you know, for sure. What are you eating? I'm eating a potato burrito that's delicious. Danny's got carne asada and chicken tacos. And then Ben over here, what'd you get? The, the torta? Torta. I said, I said it as wide as possible. Torta. Really good. Looks good, looks good. Oh, I love when people shoot something at golden hour and the, gr and the grass is yellow because it's golden hour and they're like, yo, can you shift it to green? I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah, I, I started in 2020 when the pandemic hit and uh, 
my job switched to work from home, so I just started watching like a bunch of YouTube videos and, and, and practicing with like, even like stock footage clips. Uh, and I just kind of fully engrossed myself into it because I got obsessed with color. And uh, the journey has been a very quick one. I think to, to most, but I think last year I did 360 projects that I worked on and just every project, different footage, different director, different DP, different conditions, different camera. Um, and, it, and that for sure helped with like forming a workflow that'd be quick and just so many different situations. If you're trying to learn color, I'd say just go for it, you know, practice as much as you can. I still practice on stuff today and experiment uh, with new techniques and yeah, I think, I think it's important to just like dedicate yourself to it if, if you're able to, you know. Um, let me think of something better because that was just a steamy hot shit. This is horrible. Oh, good thing I'm not a public speaker. I urge you to Say what's up to Cam. I'll leave his information below in the description. Say what's up to him. Check out his work. He's out of control. He's so talented. It's so cool to me that someone who started out watching my YouTube channel has become so successful at something that they're doing in the filmmaking industry. It's, it's really cool. Like people who watched my channel years ago are now doing things better than I could have ever done them. It's, it, it makes me proud. It does. It's cool that it's coming full circle where he's working on possibly the biggest project I've ever made. Well, not possibly, it is the biggest project I've ever made. That's the end of our three episode series of our post-production team. The movie's coming along, it's getting there. Uh, it's gonna be officially done March 13th. We're gonna enter into festivals. I have all the private screenings and cities locked down for donors. Uh, gonna release a trailer for the movie finally sometime in March, I believe. So be on the lookout for that one. And again, thank you, Milno, for sponsoring this video. If you need some organization in your life, check out the link below in my description. And I'm just gonna end this by shouting out some supporters of the film who donated through our Indiegogo campaign. I'm gonna put 20 seconds on the clock and go. John Delos Reyes, Kian Paltoff, P. Langwalner, Salem Baranaman, Francisco Moraz, Leonard Krebs, Robert Poole, The Spitballer, <laughs> CK Hicks, uh, Hussein Al Zarij, Manny Peralta, sounds like a baseball player. How much time we got? Jesse Shapowski, and we are over. Thank you all for contributing to the film. It means the world to me. See you next time. I love you.